Okay, so here we go. This is the video. You know, the video I promised in my tornado video about how I became a weather geek? Yeah, here it is. Okay, here we go. Okay, so it all started on April 27th, 2011. And to a lot of you, that date just rang a bell. After all, it was the day of the worst tornado outbreak in living Alabama memory. That day was scary. Horrific, even. And I'm going to try my best to tell you my side of the story. So the night before, I was going upstairs to my bedroom to go to bed, when I saw my dad intensely watching the news. Now, dad isn't a frequent news watcher, so I was a bit suspicious, though I shrugged it off and went upstairs. I got in my bed and closed my eyes, excited for a great day ahead. I remember closing my eyes, and what feels like right after I closed them, the sirens went off. Here's a little context. If you live in America, you know about these tornado sirens. When you're under a tornado warning, the siren sounds signaling you to go to a safe place. The sound of the siren is very eerie. After all, they are World War II air raid sirens. Horrified of the thought of a tornado, I got up out of my bed and dashed down my stairs. I looked up to see Dad at the TV once again. Dad, where's it headed? It's headed to the north. We're good for now. I walked downstairs in relief and sat down on the couch. Dad continued to watch the news, but now I wasn't that afraid. I ended up falling asleep on the couch. I woke up around 7, my normal getting up time. I put on my clothes, brushed my hair, brushed my teeth, put on my shoes, grabbed my second crater book bag, and headed out. When I stepped outside, I immediately recognized the feel in the air. It was a balmy, humid feel. That stormy feeling. I had felt the feeling many times that April, and I was used to it. Therefore, I didn't think much of it, and I went to school. I got to school and I noticed about half of my class was absent. That was odd, but what made it a bit more odd was the fact that we had a substitute. Still shaken up about the storms, some of my friends, including me, were a bit worried about our teacher. But okay, whatever. So I got my homework from the previous night and went over to this little holder cabinet thing. I put my homework in the holder and I looked out the window next to it. It was nearly pitch black. Startled, I walked back to my seat and began to work on my coloring sheet. I talked to my friends and such and I finally was starting to chill out. In the middle of the conversation, we experienced a quite sudden interruption. A tornado siren. We started to panic, but the sub calmed us down and followed us through our regular tornado drill procedures. Book overhead, go into the hall, and sit down crisscross applesauce up against the wall. We followed the procedures and sat down in the hall. Kids were horrified, but we had to keep quiet. We didn't want to get in trouble. As everyone was quieting down, you could feel the nervous energy in the air. We had had tornado warnings so much that year, but this one felt different from the others. The teacher seemed a bit more worried than the other times. Finally, the tornado warning expired and we were allowed to go back into our classrooms. Hours pass and we still continue to do our little worksheets. Then, it happens again. The sirens go off once again and the kids sigh. We go through the procedure and we sit down in the hall. I was sitting next to Grayson, and you guessed it, Cassidy. What's going on? This is two in one day. Dude, I don't know, but I'm terrified. Why are we even in school? I have no idea. And suddenly, out of nowhere, the wind picked up and the power began to flicker. Everyone panicked, and some screamed. The teachers had to calm everyone down until the power fixed itself. A tornado might have just hit us, and I was shocked we weren't dead. I was terrified. Finally, after all this crap, school was canceled. We went home, and around noon, it was a bright and sunny day. It was beautiful. I thought it was over. Meanwhile, my dad was leaving his office. People were allowed to go home, so he got in his truck and headed towards his family's farm. He had heard reports of a small tornado hit parts of my town, and he knew that if it hit our town, it would probably hit his family's farm. Dad got to the farm to observe the damage. There was little to none, the farm seemed to be fine. Dad put his hands on his hips and looked southwest. He saw a real bad thunderstorm in the distance. It was a supercell, a storm capable of producing large hail, very gusty winds, and a tornado. Dad decided he needed to head home, so he got in the truck and started for home. He turned on the radio to hear countless reports of tornadoes all across Alabama. He heard the meteorologists talk about different storms across the viewing area, and there were too many to count. There were countless tornado warnings for the entire state. Dad drove down the road heading east, as fast as he could, basically racing a supercell back to his home. He finally came to a stop, and he was able to turn to finally get home. But then he noticed something in the sky. Dad had always heard that in a tornado, the skies turn green. He never believed it until now. The sky was green and there was debris falling down from the sky. Pieces of cardboard, bricks, clothes, cement, and so many devastating things. Dad sat there in shock, and as soon as the light turned green, Dad turned on the thrusters to home. Dad finally reached the house and basically busted down the door. We need to get into the tornado shelter now. I looked over to Dad, now extra horrified. The sirens had been going off all day, but according to Dad, this one was bad news. I ran to get my shoes on, and my sister and mom came running out of the rooms to come with us. We had ponchos, but we weren't going to use them. There was no time. I put on my old shoes and booked it for the neighbor's house. 
It was raining super hard and we finally made it to the shelter where we sat down and just listened to the radio. I was scared out of my mind. I cried a little to be honest. We could hear the bang of hail as it hit the door. I was, again, horrified. Finally, after what seemed like forever, it came to a stop. We opened the hatch to find our houses okay. We walked back to the house, and on the ground, we could see debris of all shapes and sizes scattered across the yard. That scarred me. Well, my mom and my sister was actually supposed to go on a school trip to Washington, D.C. that day. Since social media sources were down, we didn't know if the trip was still going on that day. So, we all put our bags into the car, and we went off towards the middle school. Because my sister was in the middle school at the time. So we got there, and sure enough, there were no buses. So, I was mentally preparing myself to go back home. But no, Dad was tired of this dreaded, nightmarish day. Dad went screeching eastward toward the cold front. We got closer and closer to the front, and the sky got brighter and brighter. I remember the line of light as we finally went under it. It was over. For us. Tornadoes still clawed across the state. There were three to five violent long track over EF3 tornadoes over the state of Alabama as we drove through the front. Tornado warnings covered nearly the entire state. We found a little restaurant and I remember them having the weather channel on. I saw the radar image over the southeast and it looked horrifying. Red dots all over Alabama. But it was over. It's over. It's over. I had to keep on telling myself. There were butterflies in my stomach. I was nervous, and I was really shaken up. I remember the music I heard on the way back home that night. My heart was still racing. I was basically having an anxiety attack. I was nervous for my cat. I was nervous for my home. I was nervous, and I was so, so, so scared. We arrived home, and I looked up in the sky. There wasn't a cloud in the sky. It was a beautiful night. A day later, me and my dad were picking up trash and debris all over my yard. There were pieces of houses, trees, everything. Ella's dad came around the corner and showed dad a video he had gotten of the wedge tornado that had hit about a mile away from us. It was huge. Since that day, I was horrified every day. I was so scared of weather for about a week until my mom said, Harrison, maybe you could turn that fear of tornadoes into an interest for tornadoes. What do you mean? Well, if you're so scared of them, wouldn't it help you if you knew some stuff about them? Yeah. Yeah. So, for the next year, my knowledge grew and grew when it came to weather. Mountains of weather books and millions of weather videos led me to what I am today. Events like March 2nd, 2012 and April 28th, 2014 pushed me to learn more about weather. And here, in April of 2017, I can say that I know a fair amount of weather stuff. I'm a weather geek, and I'm proud.